This year I grew five different types of pole beans. In this video I'm going to show you each type of pole bean. I'm going to talk a little about what I think of each type of pole bean. And I'm also going to show you each type as they grow through the season from the time I plant them until the time I harvest them. And I'll also talk a little about why I think some did better than others. Along with all of that, I'm going to give you my top three out of this five and tell you why I ranked them that way. Pole beans need something to climb on, so you can use actual poles, you can use a trellis, or in this case I'm using very large tomato cages that I made out of concrete reinforcement wire. I use wood chips as mulch in my garden, so the first thing I do is pull back the wood chips. And then I use my four tine hand cultivator to loosen up the soil just below the wood chips. You can work in some homemade compost or fertilizer into the soil before you plant your beans, or you can side dress after the beans have started to grow. I usually plant my pole beans about an inch or two deep and about three or four inches apart, but as you can see, I don't do any measuring. Now the five types of beans I'll be planting in no particular order. The first is rattlesnake. Next is a purple variety called carmenat. Even though these beans are purple when you pick them, they turn green when they're cooked. Third is a pole bean named Seychelles. It's an early producer that also has a long growing season. The Cherokee Trail of Tears bean is a bean with a very long history. This bean can be used as a snap bean or a dried bean. Finally, we have Monte Gusto, which is a yellow wax type pole bean. This bean grows pods that are very uniform in shape and size. I planted our pole beans around the 1st of May and this is what they look like in the last week of May. The rows are running east to west, and I water them with drip irrigation. In the row to the left, I planted Monte Gusto, Cherokee Trail of Tears, and Seychelles. In the next row to the right, I planted Carmenat and Rattlesnake. Carmenat was the first type to actually start climbing. By the first week in June, the Carmenat was well over halfway up the cage, and the other types had already caught up. At this point I added four foot bamboo stakes to the top of the cages because I knew the beans would grow well past the five foot cages. Less than a week later they had all reached the bamboo stakes and had started to climb them. This is a look at the Carmenat. By the middle of June, the plants had already started to really fill out the bottom of the cages and had grown well up towards the top of the bamboo stakes. Being next to the fence really seemed to slow down the Seychelles pole beans. The Cherokee Trail of Tears, which is the one I'm showing here, and the Monte Gusto, which is just to the left of it, which I'm showing here, we're doing much better, and we're already starting to produce blooms. In the next row I had melons planted next to the fence, which gave the Carmenat an advantage over the Seychelles and the other row. As you can see, the blooms on it are very attractive. Even with the five foot cages and the bamboo extending three feet past the cages, they were running out of growing space. By the third week in July, those two rows were starting to look like a jungle, as you can see. In the foreground of the left row are some cucumbers that I planted in a cage also. At this point in the growing season, all of the vines had started to produce quite a few small beans, but they're just very hard to see with all of that foliage. Now I'll show you some beans that I harvested on one day in the third week of July. These are Monte Gusto beans, and as you can see, they produce some very attractive pods that were uniform in shape and size, and very slender. The Monte Gusto pole beans were also very productive. In the next row, straight across from the Monte Gusto, were the rattlesnake pole beans. 
This one has to be picked often because it has a tendency to get large and produce beans inside the pods. Once those beans start to become fully formed, the pods can become a little bit leathery. But if picked about this size or smaller, I think they are really good. Here's one that started to form beans and as you can see the pod changes color a little bit and those beans start to get pretty large and the pods get just a little bit leathery. But just about every bean will do that if you leave it too long on the vine. Here are some of the Carmenot pole beans and as you can see they grow some very long pods that stay fairly slender. This one was planted on the east side of the rattlesnake pole beans. The rattlesnake pole beans grew faster and taller than these and for that reason the Carmenot pole beans were shaded in the afternoon and didn't get enough sunshine. These are the Seychelles. I planted this one next to the fence which caused it to get off to a slow start. Then in the afternoons it got too much shade from the Cherokee Trail of Tears pole beans. But as you can see they grow very attractive beans and they're on the slender size and uniform in size and shape much like some of the others. The Cherokee Trail of Tears produced a lot of beans as you can see and the vines grew very well. This one also produced beans for quite a while. If you look carefully, some of the pods get a little bit of a reddish or purplish tint. This bean has been around for a long time and deserves to be around for a lot longer. Now let's get to the top three. I'll start by saying that some of these beans would have done better if planted in a different location so they didn't really have a fair shake this time. This was my first time for growing all of these, so I had to make up my mind on what they did in this one season. Coming in at number three is Seychelles. This one was in a terrible location for growing and that held it back quite a bit or it might have ranked higher. Seychelles is one of the more attractive beans that I've seen. They're real smooth and are all about in that four to six inch range and they taste very good. I'll probably be growing this again in a better location. Number two out of the top three is Cherokee Trail of Tears. This one might not have placed first in any of the judging criteria that I went by, but overall it's just a very solid pole bean. It produces nice sized beans that have good flavor and as you can see it has very good productivity. It also has very good vigor and staying power. I'm kind of a history buff and this bean even has that going for it. You might notice that they're piled on top of some Monte Gusto. This is a later harvest. Before we get to number one, let us know what your favorite pole bean is and I'm sure other folks would also be interested in hearing that. Our number one is Monte Gusto. We really like the flavor of this one, the texture of it, and it grows lots and lots of beans. Going strictly on productivity, this one was the most productive with number two being the rattlesnake. Some of this is just personal preference, and as I mentioned before, in a different growing season and in different locations, some of these might have done much better. If you disagree with my top three and have your own top three, be sure to list it down in the comments. And at least list your favorite if you have a favorite. And if you're just now finding this channel, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.